Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Monday night panel. Hope everybody is well, and you've all come down from the high from winning on Saturday. Fantastic uh, result in the end. Um, just a couple of things. Um, the walking football tournament that we had a week last Saturday went very well. Um, it looks like we're going to hit over a thousand pounds to split between um, the two charities, so the Prospect and um, Head for Change, um, which is fantastic. We've still got um, another eBay um, lot to go on and uh, the posters to, uh, to sell. So hopefully um, that will generate some money and then we can um, present the money to the two charities we've got. On the panel tonight, we have got Johnny Leefield, we have got Dan Hunt and we've got Mitchell Singh. But before anything, I will bring on Vic. Good evening, Vic. Good evening to you, Chris. Trust you are well. And I'd like um, to say thank, thank, very, thank you very much indeed to the supporters club for organising that walking football tournament. As you know, I brought a team up and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. And it was lovely to play with Tom Jones, albeit in my brief pre-injury appearances. Yeah. Uh, how, it, how is the injury? Yeah, good. I actually played in goal on Friday night just to stand there and try and stop the ball. But it, it's getting better. Let's put it like that. Good. I will be back in action in the fullness of time, let's put it like that. Good. And that's to, if anybody else is watching who had an injury on Sunday, I know there was a few. Um, hope you're all right and getting better. And special mention to Dick Matic, who unfortunately did break his wrist um, playing in oh. goal. Yes, he oh, uh, spent the um, the rest of that Sunday up in hospital um, having his uh, wrist plastered. So. Uh, Dick, if you're uh, listening, all the best to you um, and everything. So, uh, but it hasn't put him off. He's going to be manager for his team next year. Not playing, <laughs> but he's going to be manager. So, so yeah, all the best to all the people who did pick up injuries. Okay, so shall we get everybody on and we can make a start? So first we've got Dan. Evening all. And we've got Danny. And we've got Mitchell. Hello, how you doing? Evening, hey, evening. So, as usual, any questions, please put them in the comments and we will get through as many as we can. Um, as you know, unfortunately, we can't get through all of them because we do have a lot. But um, rest assured, if there is anything question-wise there that we need to pass on to the club, we do pick them out and pass them on. OK, so I'm going to leave you and I will see you later. Chris, thanks very much indeed. And uh, thank you very much, Steve, for joining us on the Monday night panel this August Bank Holiday Monday. So we appreciate your time, especially on a bank holiday. Uh, Dan, a good evening to you. Mitchell, good evening to you. And Johnny, a very good evening to you. So welcome along to all three of you. Lots of comments already I've got about Saturday. Uh, this from Boo. Hello to you, Boo. Um, great two wins. Rode our luck in both of the, the victories that uh, we've had recently. Uh, looking forward to a forward signing. Disappointed with the attendance Saturday. All in all, a great to have a club to support. Still 38 points from safety. Yes, you're a Swindon fan. Uh, House and Holiday Home Mortgages, Mark Stallard. Great title. Uh, what is so good, Vic, is the togetherness being shown by all sections of the club, the new professionalism by the coaches and backroom team, and the ability to win when not fully on it, on all in five weeks. And uh, James, hello to you. Couldn't really have had a better start to the season. I said I'd be happy with six points in the first five games. So to be on 10 is fantastic. Uh, to think we're pretty much still in pre-season for our players, fitness levels, etc. means things can only get better from here. Lots more uh, uh, to coming in. This is from Mark Collett. Hello, Mark. Absolutely buzzing, Vic. Not only a great feeling to be back out of the county ground, but to witness the club rise from the ashes in such a short time is quite something. The squad has been built, has been great chance. And if we can add further forward to the ranks, come on, you Reds. Uh, right. OK, just one more to read you before we get going. Uh, from Alex, absolutely delighted with everything uh, from the football being played, the recruitment on and off the pitch, social media presence, early improvements to the ground, all of which has equated, equated to a feel-good factor all the way around. We are back. And I think really, gentlemen, that kind of sums up uh, the feeling of the club at the moment. Is that fair to say, John Ehrman, you're around the club quite a lot? Compare and contrast to 12 months ago. Yeah, I think well, you know, when it kind of all went started, you know, the, the takeover happened and um, things got, were, were turning around, I, I think maybe pessimistically, I start to think, oh, how, how long is this going to last? But it's been, I think, five five weeks 
since Clam took over. Um, the season's, what is it, about three weeks, three weeks in now, and it still feels exactly the same. It's really nice. You know, everyone's, the atmosphere is, um, is amazing up there. Obviously, the relationships are kind of still being built, so things are kind of improving all the time even. Um, but, yeah, it's really nice, and they're, and they're winning, and they're keeping clean sheets, and this, yeah, it's just it's a, a thoroughly pleasant place to be right now. Yeah, and it's a thoroughly place, uh, pleasant place to go to on a Saturday, Mitchell, isn't it? I mean, uh, there was a comment there about being disappointed in the crowd on Saturday, which was 8,600. And I have to say, I was slightly disappointed, which sounds bonkers, doesn't it? 8,600, if you'd had that two years ago, you'd been delighted at this time. I think it's because we're certain setting at high benchmarks. So, yeah, 6,000 season ticket holders, 10,000 for a home game where the away support isn't going to be, you know, Bristol Rovers kind of support. It's going to be a couple hundred. So I think the expectation is needs to be managed. But I understand why they do it from, you know, I'm a marketer. So from a marketing point of view, you put it as high as you can and then hope that you reach that. But if he doesn't, it's still high. If they had gone 8,000, you might have not have had the same push as you had. Um, but again, we're, we're League Two. We're League Two. It's still summer holidays. So people are still very much away. Um, and there are potentially alternatives at the moment that people would do because they haven't caught the the bug yet. You know, there's still other things. That, you know, the fam, you know, your wife might convince you to, you know, don't do it this week or you know, well, maybe go another week because we've got so-and-so bank holiday weekend. Um, but then the reverse of that is there would be some that, you know, who do come. I saw, uh, you know, I've got a friend of mine who she took her daughter last minute. They're in the old town. They're like, oh, yes, yeah, go watch Frinden. Yeah, we haven't been for a while. Um, so we just need to catch a few more of those, along with the people who decide this Saturday, I'm going to go and watch Swindon. And, and luckily, we yeah you know, we had a win because normally, well, like I said before, when we get a lot of fans or TV, yeah. it doesn't go the yeah. way. But it was a a lucky win, and we'll take the win, and we'll take the three points, and we'll go. Thank you very much. Yeah, Carlisle being a classic example of that, really, uh, the first home game. Of course, some people are playing cricket, Dan, and or going to weddings on Saturdays. So. You know, there are other things for people to do, aren't there, Dan Hunt? I thought the choice of a cricket-themed wedding was uh, a bit <laughs> outlandish, but <laughs> no, I uh, had a jolly good time uh, following the updates on on Twitter. Thanks again to our friend in America, Jif, um, for your excellent uh, video clips that kept me uh, kept me eye in. Um, yeah, just a bit like with the Sulphur game, you know, you could make an argument Swindon might have lost both of those games. Um, and it wouldn't mean we're necessarily any further less along our journey in sort of trying to become a, a playoff finisher this season. Um, but yeah, the fact we have kept clean sheets and the fact we have dug out wins in difficult circumstances, that's some really promising signs for the season ahead. Um, I think back to my favourite season, really, 9 10 with Austin and Painter up front. There were actually a lot of 1-0 Swindons in that season, uh, especially away from home. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just building on that that point about the crowd as well, I think it's easy to forget when you look at our last promotion season in League Two under Richie Wellens, some of those August, September, October home crowds, you know, we were getting 6-5, six, 6-7, six, six, These things take a long time to build and not a long time to break a habit actually so I think the fact we're getting 8-6 at home to Mansfield is extremely encouraging best thing the club can do is keep winning and uh, they will come yeah that's the thing isn't it Johnny um, you can win as many games as you want away from home but it, it, it's kind of important you do win your home matches because you know the vast majority of your fans go to home matches and if you continually lose at home or don't win at home then people think, oh, do you know what's not worth bothering with? The, the World Cups, I mean, not necessarily the season ticket holders, but the ones who, you know, would make the difference in the crowd. Oh, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, I can think of several examples, people that I know that we might be playing well, like we did against Carlisle. Um, but if you don't win, they're going, oh, and they're just passing it around. And then you start picking picking holes in the performance. Um, whereas if we win, like we did on Saturday, where... You know, kind of rode our luck. We defended pretty. I'd say we defended really well, to be honest. Um, yeah. but you know, you kind of create that luck. You create your own luck, and then we rode it out and kind of got there in the end. Yeah, that's that's the thing that people remember. You're willing when you win. You're willing to overlook those little 
small errors or the things that we didn't quite do as well. But if you're playing well and losing, it only goes, you know, it only lasts so long, doesn't it? it? Only goes so far with with the kind of walk ups and and those that that little ten percent of the extra that can really help. Yeah, twenty is it twenty three quid? I think on the day, something like that. It's a lot of money if if the football's not great, is it? So um, and the results aren't going your way. So that does make a people uh, a difference to people, especially you know if money's tight. Right, um, we've got lots of questions coming in. Um, uh, this from Sean went to get my Stevenage ticket. Sounded like the PA is being worked on. Now again on Saturday, uh, Mitchell. I don't know where you sit. Where do you sit? Arkles, and we it's great. Never having issues. <laughs> it, it did come and go though in the Arkles, didn't it? During the roll call, it sort of hit and missed a bit. And, and as so, I understand so, it, in the Don Rogers, it was pretty poor. Um, and they have been working on it, but hopefully they will get it right. The club knows about it, I think, don't they? So they are working on it. But uh, as far as you're concerned, the Arkles is okay. Yeah, but I have one ear for the radio, so I've I've got I've listened to the commentator as I'm watching it. So sometimes I I might miss something like that because I'm an old man. Oh, gosh, <laughs> wish I was as old man as you are. Um, uh, I'm just I just can't hear full stop. Uh, Dan, I'm sure you know because you're on the trust, of course, and uh, you are the club is aware of all these problems, aren't they? Yeah, well, uh, just a bit of a personal update, uh, Vic. Um, as of a couple of weeks ago, I've actually stood down from the Trust SDFC board um, after four and a half years. So um, I uh, I leave that in the very capable hands of uh, James Burgoyne, who's now running the uh, the Trust SDFC socials. He's doing a great job. And uh, obviously the other board members who are still pressing on. But yes, um, as far as I know, my chats with Rob Angus in the past, you know, they are fully aware of the PA issue and other uh, you know, historic issues too. So I think it's just a case of when you first come into a, a sort of crisis club in the summer, you've probably got a, a set of tasks and, and that to-do list is long. And um, yeah, they've sort of done a lot of the firefighting ones. They're starting to build a good squad. And now I'm I'm sure we can start dealing with some of these um, everyday issues, which like you say, are really important when you're doing things like roll calls, which are so personal to people. Um, I'm pretty sure in terms of health and safety, a, a work in Tannoy is also a, a requirement. So, yeah, it's, um, I'd expect that to be dealt with um, pretty swiftly. Yeah, well, this is from Keith. <laughs> so Hi, Keith. What, from, what you've just told, what, from what you've just told us, um, any news on buying the ground? Brackets, one for Dan, close brackets. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you can say about that. Then, um, no longer... Well, in, in my final interactions uh with the trust um at the, the last board meeting i attended you know we were looking at our strategy for the year ahead and uh, the years ahead and i know the the ground purchase on a 50 50 basis with the club um that's something the council are really keen uh to proceed with um something the trust and um the club are really keen to proceed with as well so hopefully um that can proceed at pace um in the future okay um, this may be one for you, Johnny, uh, from Graham. Any news on a new striker? No, to be honest, I would, there's one thing I would say about this, this new um, new coaching setup. They're very organised and they're very good at keeping a secret. <laughs> so I, while I don't know who or if, um, I have the utmost confidence they will get someone in tomorrow. Um, and if they don't, then I, I genuinely believe Bengana when he says we'll be fine. Um there may be sort of some periods where, you know, I think that the magnifying glass will kind of highlight the the lack of options a little bit more than we'd like. But, you know, looking, there's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of players in there who are capable of getting, midfielders especially, that are, ca- are capable of getting 10 goals a season. And if they all just chip in, at least until January, then we'll be fine. I, I think he's right when he says we don't need to rush it if we if we don't get the right person we don't get the right person. We go with what we've got. We're not going to be in a position where we go and sign some kind of washed up old uh, striker looking for his last paycheck. We just don't need to. Like the what they've built such a good um, vibe in the dressing room, and so, there's such good quality around. They haven't wasted. I don't think he's made a bad signing yet, so I can think of. Um, well, I, I mean, I think most people were delighted for Tyree Simpson on Saturday because he's worked his socks off. 
in the opening fixtures for the town. And, and I know some people were thinking, well, is he going to get goals? I don't think he is a 20-goal striker, is he? But my goodness, does he work his socks off. And I don't think there was anybody in that ground that begrudged in that goal Saturday. That's fair to say, Johnny, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I was absolutely yeah. delighted for him to score that because, you know, he, he went so close at Scunthorpe on the opening day. Um he had a couple of chances against Cambridge. I think he sort of had a chance or two in in each game. Um, and you know, Ben Garner said he, he'd got a little bit fed, fed up. I think sort of I can't remember the phrase he sort of said, but it was he got a little bit down. Um, but he he almost didn't really show it. I don't know if anyone else sort of felt like that. I just felt like he he carried on going. He really carried on hitting hitting making his runs, hitting the spots, um, trying to get himself involved. And obviously, the 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 manner of the, of the goal, the way it came about was brilliant because it wasn't some sort of you know tap in or um you know just kind of hit him and went in he he really had to work for that um obviously the ball was amazing in but he's got yeah. him in a great position in the middle he's bullied those two strikers off and he said get off me i want this ball more than you and he's basically just stuck a leg out to divert in which actually would took a good amount of skill because it was like his sort of wrong leg um so yeah i'm absolutely delighted for him and i hope it, that really gives him the confidence to to kick on and if he can go and get 10 15 goals you know i wouldn't be surprised because i really like a lot of a lot of his game yeah there was a moment at salford and i don't know if anybody knows this but he he kind of lost the ball it was late on in the game he kind of lost the ball but instead of just shrugging his shoulders he got up slide tackled the bloke and won the ball put the ball into touch and i to me that says a lot about a young kid of 19 do you know what that's an attitude and you know, you don't get that coached. You have that in you. And uh, that's why I was so delighted for him Saturday, Mitchell, because I think he's got a future, the kid, hasn't he? I am I like him. I'm not as confident as Johnny with the fact that if we don't get another striker, we'll be fine. I'm not that confident. I, I need, We need another striker. Um, I think, you know, McCurdy could, could play off him if, if he needs to. That's probably the best. We need another striker. It's as simple as that. And, you know, he's... Bar Saturday, he played every minute of every game up front on his own, and you know I, I do feel that certain fans will, less educated fans, will not see the hard work that he does because he does so much for the team. He really does chasing balls down, working at, playing up front on your up front is on your own is hard, really hard work, and it's similar to you Vic. You know when he was making those those last ditch tackles or even just chasing people down channels for. You know, bad balls from the midfield that got from even on one side of the pitch, and they put on the other side of the pitch. He's ran and chased it down just to take a bit of pressure off the team. Yeah, you know, all I ask for in any player that puts on a swing and down is work, work for the show and work for the team. And anything after that's great, but I'm not as confident as he will score you. He doesn't make the runs. I don't think he's intelligent enough or experienced enough to make the right runs that we need. He doesn't make those runs across the front post. You know, when we got our wingers, I think. One of the wingers going down about put that put that ball and he doesn't make that run across the defender where you're going to get your foot on it. The goal he scored on Saturday was great. And I agree with Johnny. He that guy was coming. He's like that nah, nowhere near. Just moved him out of the way. And it's really easy to put that ball over because you're flying in with your wrong foot. You know, Johnny Williams. I thought when he was running, I was like, come on, run. That's Simpson because he looked miles away from it. I thought he's not even going to get there, and he managed to get to it, but. I think if he works hard and does it for the team, but we need another striker. He's, I don't think he's, yeah, he's 19 and give him, you know, give him that, you know, if he was a 19 year old person who was our player and not on loan, I think we'd be screaming a hundred times more about him uh, because he's on loan. It, it, we're not as excited. I just don't think he's going to, or it will come with time, but he doesn't get across that front post. He doesn't make the right runs at the right times. And what's frustrating is how is he's really good when we play it to his feet. You know, let, let, let Payne come take the ball back off you. Look, let, let, let Gladwin come take the ball off you. But what happens is we play the through ball or, or in the air. And for someone so big and strong, he doesn't win enough. In, like, he doesn't win all the headers. And we don't utilise his ball to feet. I think, he, let's, I think he has 100% got a future in the game. I think he just needs an experienced striker to say, right, this is where you come and hold the ball up. This is where you make the run. This is where you should be going across the front post. Because... If we have another striker who's experienced, who could you know, hold his hand and teach him that, then we got a player and another striker. That's that's what I would like to see. 
Yeah, I, I, that, that moment at Salford reminded me of Paul Benson at Morecambe in the 89th minute uh, when we were one up and he came and chased the ball down and and and, and chased the, the, the player down and put the ball out. It was one fantastic. I always remember it and that was the same sort of thing. Uh, another one here, Dan. <laughs> you are the trust representative tonight, whether you like it or not. Anyway, uh, I don't know what you might think about this. Uh, this is from Karen. Any chance of opening the first block of the Arkles again? Some people are sitting there unofficially, but I'd like my seat back. And uh, there is a sort of area that isn't open. I mean, have you heard anything about that or is that just completely off your radar? Um, well, back in the summer, I did see several fans tweeting, including one of the trust writers, Dan Johnson, saying that he was able to buy a season ticket in that block again, which he'd previously been disappointed not not to be able to sit in there. So um, I've not heard anything is the, is the simple answer. Um, seeing the footage on Saturday, I did see some fans sat in there, but looking at the ticketing website during the week, I see the tickets aren't on sale in there. Um, I guess, you know, I mean, we now have a club that's receptive to feedback. Um, so I would say uh, if you're listening, Rob and, and co, um, it sounds like we've got a, a posse of fans who quite like to buy their tickets in that block. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's see what the club club come back with on that on it, that front. Didn't Rob yeah, say man. about those seats? Were I, I remember on here a few weeks ago that if some people felt uncomfortable with being sat so close to certain people, because they of COVID, could sit some, yeah, they would yeah. be allowed to move across to that. So it might yeah. might be that. Yeah, I, I, I well, we pass all the feedback onto the club, so that's. Um, Something we'll continue to do. And um, on the subject of a striker, Dan, where, where do you sit with that? Another young one, experienced one? Yeah. You like um, well, it's been quite interesting listening to the gents, Johnny and Mitchell, um, slightly contrasting views. I think my view has developed over the last uh, five or six games. I think Simpson is undoubtedly young and raw. Um, but I think in the six games he's played already, we've seen a marked improvement. Um, and I just wonder if that has maybe slightly changed the recruitment um, policy in terms of bringing in that extra striker. Maybe four or five games ago, we were looking for an experienced striker who would probably play most of the games and Simpson would be trying to knock on the door um, to sort of challenge that person's place in the team. But I think actually Simpson has done pretty well. There's, there's still areas of his game he can improve. Um, I think despite being a massive guy, I think he, he's still got a bit of work to do when he gets that ball into feet with his back to goal. Um, but yeah, I think that goal will give him a lot of confidence. Strikers um, thrive off of confidence in front of goal for sure. So um, no, Simpson's, he's doing really well. I, I, I think in the Carlisle home game, there's a couple of occasions where the ball flashed across the goal. And Simpson was still kind of on his heels on the penalty spot. Whereas on Saturday, you've already seen that improvement where he was busting a gut to get on the end of that that early cross. So um, I, I think his rate of improvement will continue to be quite vast. Um, the interesting thing will be, do you want to bring in the same type of striker as Simpson? Because that's how we're going to play. In which case, if Simpson breaks a leg and is out for six months, you've got a sort of ready-made you know, replacement to play this system? Or do you want something a bit different so that you've got a, a different option from Simpson and or the option to play uh, two up front? So a name that was you know, mentioned just in terms of rumours today, Scott Kashkett from Wickham. He's actually joined Crew Alexandra in League One. Um, but he would have been that bit of something different, smaller, quicker, more playing off the, uh, the shoulder of the last defender. So... Um, Perhaps I'll put that question back out to you, gents. What type of striker do you think Pencarno will bring in? Will it be the same as Simpson so we can continue playing away or or something different? We'll leave that one over for a minute while you two can think about it. But um, this is from Mark. Nigel Clough mentioned us as one of the favourites. Is this a common comment? Now, I think most of us who've been involved with this panel said uh, in the summer and at the start of the season we finished above the dotted line, we'd be very, very happy. Now, of course, <laughs> Johnny, uh, things have slightly changed a little bit, haven't they? And they sit fourth in the league and all of a sudden, 
people are taking notice. So where do you sit on this one? It's hard to look, look, look smug now, isn't it, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, do you know, like, I said, I said what I said at the time because I thought, why not? It was a simple case of if you don't, if you don't swing, you never know, kind of thing. Um, I, I'm happy to. Have, I feel like I've sort of been proved right that actually everything just came together as mu as well as we could have hoped it would. Um, I think we just say you tipped them for the playoffs, didn't you? When we all went, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you know, we'll see. It, we'll see at the end of the year. Um, to be honest, having seen the first six games, and you know, you've seen kind of a variety of teams, I would I don't want to like back down and say I don't think we'll get in the playoffs, but I'm even more I'm more confident that there's a top ten place there. Like, you know, looking at the variety of teams, okay, we've ridden our luck in a couple of games and things could have gone a bit different. But yeah, you know, I think the way we're playing and the way we've hit the ground running, you built we built early momentum. And if you get in that groove early, you know, we can kind of, we've got a lot more room, okay, if things go slightly wrong for a month, like, like they did under Richie Wellens, you know, you've still got room to recover and then go on a, you know, eight game unbeaten run where actually things go really well and then you end up getting in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, why not still? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, Mitch, we're, <laughs> you know, we're, I think you're, you've are you changed your view a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> It's just the way, you know, I, I, we can't be, look, looking at what I've seen, I don't want to get carried away because I, I try and play it down, but it's the, we're winning ugly. You know, even when we were at our best, we, we're not necessarily the best at winning ugly. I think it was the Salford game and, and we were running down that clock and I was like, we're not normally that team. We're normally the team it gets done to and it's the most frustrating thing in the world watching it happen to you, but when you do it to someone else, it's, it's enjoyable Brilliant. to watch because it's normally like... <laughs> I'm like, why are they like this? Why can't they play the game properly? And then we're doing it. And I'm like, and it's, I've not seen many Swindon teams run down the clock as, like that before. We, we, we're normally quite naive when it comes to trying to kill out the time. I can't really remember many times when we, we, we've been that good at you know, just killing it. And, and normally, because normally we're like everyone buying the ball, panicking for dear life and hoping that you know, a set piece doesn't go in. Um, so little things like that. And, you know, interestingly, I think we played better when we lost than the two games that we just won. Um, and you know, if we haven't had a pre season, and you know, we've got the likes of Johnny, Johnny Williams, a fully fit Johnny oh. Williams in your ranks, you know, like Lydon to come back if he's yeah, ever fit enough to, to come back. And suddenly, yeah, I think we've got a, in the goalkeeper, we've got a player who can win you. Yeah, you know, he is the difference at the moment, in my opinion. We've got some great players on the pitch, but the saves that he's making get us three points. You know, he's. He reminds me of Wes when we first got Wes and we were all a little bit excited, but the good news is he's our player already. We've not got him on loan. And like, because of the keeper, yeah, I'm top half. Okay. Salford's a classic example of a goalkeeper getting your three points because he did. No question about that. Uh, Dan, what about you? I mean, you know, I think we were being realistic, you know, in the we didn't even know we'd have a football club for goodness sake. So, you know, you have to be realistic about these things. Where, where are you on this now? Um, well, I I was feeling positive three or four weeks ago. Um, and a lot of that is just to do with the quality of player that we're bringing into the club. I think August was always likely to be a bit of a, a pre-season kind of vibe as the team got to know each other, players got fit, the manager got to know the team. So the fact that we've yielded 10 points from five games is absolutely fantastic and I think me and others if anything we're looking for this team to sort of kick on now and I suppose at the same time I would be slightly guarded because I think um, the Carlisle home game we weren't very fluent and we lost um, at Salford you know that easily could have been a, a draw or a defeat the Tranmere home game there were moments where you know, we we could and perhaps should have gone one nil down, but for Wallacott save, uh, and even on Saturday, uh, Mansfield, you know, must be pig sick that the goal that wasn't, or the goal that was wasn't, um, uh, as well as you know missing several other chances. So slightly guarded, but in a way, it's kind of a positive too because we haven't quite hit our straps yet, 
and we've already got 10 points. And then the sort of other side of me is thinking, well, actually, you've played a pre-season favourite in Salford. You've played Tranmere, who I think are going to be top six or seven side, looking at their squad. And Mansfield under Nigel Clough, I think, is another good benchmark for seventh or above. So, yeah, winning ugly, as Mitch said, fantastic quality. And, um, yeah, clean sheets. We're not used to this. I mean, this time Three last year, yeah. Matej Kovar sort of chucking the ball in the back of the net, which isn't <laughs> helpful. And that can really undermine a, a side. And then equally, you know, a side can feel really emboldened when you've got a, a centre-back partnership in Conroy and Critchlow, which is looking a million dollars. Um, Odomeo slotted back in really well. Wallacott, um, you know, there isn't really any pressure coming from Ward because Wallacott is is the man, isn't he? Um, yeah, I mean, cautious, severe optimism. Okay. I mean, yeah, apart from one extraordinarily comic moment on Saturday, you might well recall this, when Mansfield seemed certain to equalise, there had been a mistake. I think it was Dion Conroy made the Conroy mistake. caught on the ball, yeah. It, yeah, and it looked, right, Mansfield going to sc- Oh, no, he's passed the ball. Oh, no, he's fallen over. Oh, it was completely... Fred Carno Circus. I, I I can't recall a similar moment for many, many years, and we were all laughing. Uh, this is from Paul. 8,600 is a great attendance. We'll get more as the season progresses. Uh, from Kevin, crowds will always fluctuate. Not everyone can afford a season ticket, and that's very true. Uh, from Rob, what's there to complain about? We nearly lost our club, and look where we are. I, I don't think anybody's complaining. Uh, Johnny, from Dave, maybe I'm being critical, but are we overplaying in the wrong area? Albeit Saturday's goal from the goal came from the goalkeeper playing out. Um, there are times when I guess you're watching, maybe perhaps it's a little frustrating the passing football, but hey, if you keep winning, so what? Just to, uh, quickly, was that ball over the line or not? Because we couldn't see where we were. Yes, okay. yes, hundred percent. I've even stopped the video <laughs> and watched it. So. Where Critchlow's body is, okay, the ball is behind him at some point. If Critchlow is on the line and the ball's behind him, it's in. It's over the line. Critchlow is on the line, the ball's behind him. It's a, it's a goal. Okay, well, I, I couldn't comment. What about the advertiser? What did you say? Um, yeah, I mean, from where I was sat, um, but I'm like, you know, the, the other side of the halfway line. It looked in. Um, the Mansfield commentator certainly thought so. My God. <laughs> um, he, he called it, and I quote, one of the great injustices that the linesman didn't give it. It's like, well, if you can't see it, you can't give it, can he? So, Not um, a lot happens in Mansfield. You can't <laughs> give him that. <laughs> According to him, it does. Oh, my God. He thought it was a, like greater than Wembley up there. He's, oh, I can't wait. You know, when you come up there, and I think it's like January. I was, oh, he's talking about like this since the greatest thing since sliced bread. So, quite frankly, I couldn't give you know two hoops whether it did or didn't go in the referee didn't well, get it in the paper the next day it didn't go in so that's that uh as far as i'm concerned yeah, doesn't it? there you go yeah, i think one it. thing one thing we should remember as a fan base though and it's easy to be quite blinkered you know in a month's time something of that scale may happen of to course. us yeah and we'll and, be angry about yeah. yeah and of course we'll be angry but you know these things yeah. do tend to even themselves out it's the oldest cliche in the book yeah i mean um, so, yeah. so yeah. you did that, that goal might have, you know, we might not get a Stonewall penalty and stuff like that. Yeah. That's just sort of the nuances of, you know, lower league football, isn't it? We don't have VAR. Yeah. So thankfully there are no, you know, long stoppages and, and you'd have to look at everything and this, that and the other. It's just the game's allowed to develop. The, yeah. it's the, the simple fact of the matter is the linesman didn't give it because he couldn't see. I looked straight at him. He was, you know, cr- crouched by the corner looking along the line. Obviously he couldn't see and it all happened fairly quickly as well. So there's a photo I just, uh, for those who are the, uh, older memories might remember Bolton getting relegated from the Premier League because of uh, basically on that a result when the ball had gone over the line it wasn't given and it had a, a knock on effect in terms of the points they got and eventually they ended up getting relegated Mitchell sorry you're going to say something um I think it's the same person that Johnny's talking about there's a photo where the 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 play the Swindon players look I think he, what he quoted in Twitter going naughty school kids being caught and you can see an angle of the Swindon players <laughs> um, where they're like, and then I think I think Critchlow is kicking it away or something, and that's the one he shared, which made you know, I think he's right. I think the players are like, oh, we got away. With it. There's a really funny photo that I think he shared on Twitter where he, he's pretty much spot on. It, it does look like naughty children getting away yeah. with 
But again, it, like, like, like Dad said, it will balance itself out. There's going to be a situation where we're going to be annoyed, but you just got to laugh, get a bit of luck and move on and smile. But look, I, like, I, I don't want to labour the point. I also, I just don't care. Like, it's great that it wasn't good. I, well, that never <laughs> happens to us, does it? it no. When was the last time we got a decision like that blatantly obvious that it just didn't get given and it went our way? It, does, it just doesn't happen. So, like, you know, ha, 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 we won, see you later. Well, when there <laughs> was like, seven sorry. minutes, I thought that was going to be where... Cause yeah. I, thought, I couldn't work out where yeah, seven yeah. minutes came from. I thought, ah, he realised he's got it wrong and trying to give him some more time to get oh, it right. Seven, As seven, I say, in the paper the next day, it said Quinton won Mansfield nil. That's it. So yeah, I so sure I didn't comment on the referee's performance. In it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say in brackets Mansfield were unlucky. Close bracket. Uh, so, what about this overplaying thing from Dave? Then, um, are we overplaying in the wrong area, Johnny? What's your point on that? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I, I'm a person who, if I was a manager, likes my team to keep the ball. I don't think we're doing it for keeping its sake. I, you know, you've seen a Luke Williams side, for example, is the easy example where we're just knocking it around the back. They're being patient with it because if you give the ball away, obviously you then can't score. But I don't think they're they're not knocking it around. I think that the best marker for me is that Wallacott doesn't touch the ball that much because he's not, he's okay with his feet, but he's not brilliant. Um, he's not touching the ball too often, and then if he is, it's just going long and he's getting rid of it. So. Are you to yeah you know, to to give you a short answer for a change? I would say I don't I don't think we are, and I think we're just keeping the ball um, really well to frustrate the, to frustrate te- to frustrate teams and tire them out. I think the two the two times we've won one nil, Salford and Mansfield absolutely were all over us in the first half, and then the second half they couldn't keep up because we had the ball a lot of the time and they just tied and they couldn't press anymore. And then when they needed that final. Uh, kick in the final 10 minutes they just didn't get it at Salford they they didn't come in near our box I just didn't see the ball down that end so um, yeah no basically it's harder to play without the ball than it is to play with it I think it's fair to say uh, Mitchell you'll be on that uh, uh, similar to what Johnny said there, there comes a stage where I think we're under Mark Cooper we, we nailed it we had it down to a T with the likes of Jack Stevens at the back and yeah we really did do well and then when we lost the likes of Jack Stevens we're suddenly asking Branco to play out from the back and it's you know you've got to do it if you've got the right players and have a bit more confidence in the guys we've got at the back at the moment foot you know, I don't want to see you know Branco like back playing out that he's not the right player and it, we got caught a lot that year on the ball and then I was getting frustrated I was like just get rid just you're not the person to be playing out the ball but I have confidence in the guys we have at the back or all, all of them to be honest every defender that plays I feel I feel quite confident the only slight I have is when we're keeping the ball, and, you know, like Johnny said, keep the ball. That's that's the end of the game. Frustrate them, drag people out of positions. Then Conroy would do a random pass, like a long ball. And I was like, okay, why are we keeping the ball to go to then hit that long ball out for for them to get a throw in? You know, it happened a few times where I was like, just keep the ball. Don't need to force it. Make the gaps. Play with the ball. But one, you, know, you don't have to hit that pass. Just just wait. Keep the ball because it will frustrate people. It will draw people out of position, and we'll find the gap. You don't have to play that Hollywood Gerard pass from the back. Just be patient. And I feel like he's the least patient of our defenders who suddenly goes, oh, there's a gap, whack, and it goes up for a throw-in. I, I would say in his defence, sometimes he hits an absolute peach of a long ball. Yeah, and, no, uh, I, do, I do agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I am a great... I, I've got died in the world, Dion Conroy. I just think he's a Rolls-Royce footballer. I've said it on here many times before, and I think he is... Uh, you know, if he reached his full potential, he'd be a top-class footballer. Uh, Dan, are we overplaying at times or not? Um, I think you've got to react to what's in front of you. And having watched the the whole Mansfield game back on iFollow, I think what you saw in the first half from Mansfield was a team who, you know, a compliment to Swindon. They wanted to press us really high and they had a lot of yellow shirts in that top third of the pitch trying to stop us play out. So sometimes you've got to be a little bit flexible in, in playing style is all I would say. Um, because... Yeah, you know, on a different Saturday, we might have played ourselves into a little bit of trouble there. Um, and case in point in the second half, with Conroy getting uh, the ball nipped off his feet by Hawkins. And luckily, Hawkins, bizarrely... Um, Very uh, good. Hit, thank like you. Um, just hit it too far ahead <laughs> of uh, his strike partner, Johnson. So, um, do I want to see us play football? Absolutely. And have we got the players capable of doing it? And Conroy, Critchlow, Odomeo, the full-backs are all comfortable. Baudry, you know, even as that 
fourth centre half is very comfortable on the ball. So um, yeah, just a little bit of flexibility because the only thing that disappointed me in that first half is because you're doing so much knocking about between your back back five and the goalkeeper, you're actually starving your creative players of the ball. Um, so you know we want to see Gladwin on the ball high up the pitch. Same with Payne. Um, I don't think Grant had a great game on Saturday. It's fair to say. Um, Reed was a good link man from defence to attack, but quite often Grant uh, dawdled, gave the ball away, and it, it just all that patient work before it um, suddenly becomes worthless if you can't get the ball to your creative attacking players. But I think Mansfield, because of how they played in that first half, you know they they can't keep up that level of pressure in the whole match, and that's why I think part of the reason why Swindon. You know, became more comfortable in possession and actually grew into the game second half. Williams obviously, you know, helps massively too. He's just, you know, very intelligent, got a lot of presence, and uh, as you saw for the goal, just brilliant, great. Assist. I'm still staggered. We've signed him. I can't take it in. What? Bench warmer. We signed who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, we haven't got him for two games, obviously, because he's an international footballer. Who knew? Uh, this from Lee. It was great to witness a number of Axis maintenance fans around the county ground. It will take some time, but Clem will get it. Will get there. This from Pete. The pass for Simpson's goal on Saturday was a carbon copy of Iandolo's ball across the six-yard box against Carlisle. Hopefully, it means someone showed him this and he learned from it. It wasn't a fluke. So it goes back to what we were saying earlier. He's 19 and he's going to get coached as to what to do as a striker. And I think, you know. We we all should remember that. This from Steve. Uh, McCurdy seems to get stick from some quarters. Is this justified? I mean, I, I uh, just a quickie, Johnny. This from Steve. When is Clem back to Oz? I think mid September he's going back, isn't he, Johnny? Yeah, I think he's yeah. Is it the fourteenth something? I think it's the, yeah, about mid September, literally the middle of September. Yeah, um, Harry McCurdy. Now here we go. <laughs> we have a bit of a joke where I sit. And it, 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 Harry McCurdy don't come on because he's away doing a long uh, piano solo in a progressive rock band because he, he just looks like a progressive rock musician. And he comes on, and I love Harry McCurdy. He's a free spirit. He gets on there. He does his game. And to go at referees, gets himself booked rather sillily, I have to say. But you know what? <laughs> he's, he's like the kid at school who's got bags of enthusiasm. I just, I don't know. There's something about Harry McCurdy. What, what about you, Johnny? Yeah, I think you're pretty yeah. much spot on there, isn't it? He's he's a free spirit. Um, if anyone if anyone has Instagram, I'd encourage you to follow and follow him on Instagram because he's just, I mean, he's living his life the way he wants to, and you know, <laughs> all, all that. I'm fully fully in favour. So, yeah, when, when he comes on, the, it's one of those things where, uh, yeah, you'd like him to kind of curb his um, penchants for a strop, let's put say. But you know, he kind of he just play he plays football the way he lives his life almost he is such a free spirit he kind of drifts sometimes he's great sometimes he frustrates you because you know he could do better than he does but um yeah he's a deep I mean great I was I said before I'm delighted to see him when he came on trial I thought well if we can get him he's a great option and if you can kind of build him back up I think he's still only 24 isn't he and he's obviously had he had a bit of a like a decent start and then he kind of went off the board at Port Vale for a number of reasons maybe he just wasn't handled correctly um, ben Garner seems like the sort of coach, and his and and um, the two spots are kind of the group that can, you know, push him back in the right direction and hopefully get the best out of him. So, I don't think we're any worse for having him in the squad. That's that's for sure. No, so you're not, uh, Mitch. I, I I tend to get the feeling that you might quite like him too. Is that right? It, no, I think what Charlie said. Um, I don't know who one of the players on Instagram put a photo of what he was wearing the other day, and I was first thing I did turn, turn around to my wife. I was like, well, look at this. She was like, what? I was like, he's a football player. She's like, oh, is he a football? He's a skateboarder or something. Um, <laughs> I was listening to the, the Low Stranger podcast. I don't know which one the lad said. And they basically said, you know, he looks like he is, you know, more of a skateboarder than, than, than a football player. But he somehow makes himself look older, trying to dress younger. Um, I feel he reminds me a little bit of um, of Johnny Smith, to be honest, from last year. He's, he's all pace. He's all excitement. Um just that decision making right at the end so either the cross or the shot i'd like to see him potentially up front um uh, maybe off simpson uh as an option and just ch- a little bit like what tyler smith did last year you know chasing chasing bodies down with the pace and, and scaring them a bit more and 
he might make a few stupid last ditch tackles and you know a bit late here and there. But I think he that that would create quite a bit of fear and that pressure and chasing down, you know, def- defending from from the front. From the wing, I, I don't think he works hard enough at getting back to support the the defenders. But saying what Johnny said, we're not a worse team for having him. I think he does have something about him. Just I think he'll be one of those players who will be probably the best player on the pitch, or he's not involved. And that's just he's just one of gonna be one of those players. Yeah, there was a great moment at Salford again, Dan. I you know, he was gonna come on as a sub. And uh, they didn't bring him on. But instead of sitting there and sulking, he, he actually supported the team and, and was really up for supporting the team. And it seems to me he's one of those sorts of players, you know. Uh, I mean, I obviously don't know him, but, you know, he'd, have, he'd be fun to have around, I guess. Yeah. Um, to, the, to the point, you know, at Salford, you know, he is a professional and they are a, a unit of players. So you'd expect him to take that well, frankly. Um you only need to look at last season, though, to see how a fractured, unhappy squad can react to a number of situations. So um, I, I really love McCurdy. I think he's going to be a good point of difference in the squad. Um, we've got a lot of number 10s and attacking players who like to play narrow. I haven't got that much pace. I'm talking like Payne, um, Williams, uh, Gladwin. Um People who, you know, want to take a touch. Whereas I think McCurdy gives you pace. He gives you directness. He is an old school winger. And this is why he does frustrate some. Because, you know, four or five times he's going to run down a a dark alley and lose the ball. But so long as there's that one moment where he breaks through the line or beats a man, I think um, I think there's definitely room for him in this squad. Without him, we do look a bit one-paced. Uh, I would say. Um, and actually, later in the season, once the, the league table starts taking shape and you play some of the worst sides in the league, teams are going to come to the county ground and sit deep. They're going to put a lot of men behind the ball. And so you're going to appreciate McCurdy's pace, trickery, and just willingness to run, frankly, um, when it comes to breaking some of those sides down. I think in the Tramir game, um, to excellent attempts on goal sort of making a very clever run um off the shoulder of the defenders very unlucky not to score both you know another day should have had at least one of them but for the uh, the goalkeeper's save so now i think tolerate mccurdy's sort of randomness tolerate the, the the running down the blind alleys because he will give you uh that attacking output which you need in a quite a one-paced attacking midfield. I think he's just something different. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't take something different. But I think, you know, great. Absolutely. I'm all for randomness, quite frankly. Uh, this from Rob. Let Williams play those balls into the box and Simpson and or another striker will score plenty. Uh, this from Dan Johnson. I think you mentioned earlier, uh, Dan. Uh, I contacted Rom Angus about the first section of the articles and he said they will open it if the demand is there. I think you said that earlier on. Um, from Kevin, don't forget Reed's goal saving tackle. Uh, ah, Lou Reed, walk on the wild side. Sorry, thought I had to get that one in. So, uh, for those older viewers, um, let's have a look. Uh, why isn't Williams starting matches? This is from Steve. I would imagine, Johnny, is that a fitness thing? Uh, uh pure and simple, yeah, it's just um, not quite, not quite there yet. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where you, it's you want him to start because, in theory, when he's fully fit and he starts, he should run the game from from the get go, and I'm sure he will. But right now, it's kind of working him coming off the bench, and I don't think anyone, maybe you know, Bar Gladwin. There's a lot of people who have kind of cemented their spots already, so it feels like if it's not broken right now, you don't need to throw him in. Like he's a great a great option to have off the bench. Um, but yeah, right now it's just not not quite fully fit, so. Give him, give him a few weeks, and then I'm sure, you know, potentially Northampton, Port Vale, time kind of time he, he may start. Uh, from Matthew, what's the figure on season tickets? Do we know what the latest is on that? I haven't seen in a while. I think it was it was sort of creeping over. It was over four thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of four one, four two, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure they're going to get much higher than that now i think like mitch said earlier you kind of i think the six thousand was a 
was if we can push up to six then great but if we only hit between four or five then that's still a, a massive improvement on what we've had in quite a, quite a number of years so you know all for it really hello this is from mark merriman we might know mark merriman might we if nothing else the three league games at the county ground has reminded me that football without fans is nothing the three home attendances have been fantastic for league two and the atmosphere has been electric has been wonderful um and uh, it's just a pleasure to be there at the minute I know there were one, two unsavoury moments on Saturday and, uh, as I understand, unsavoury incidents and uh, there is no place in football for any of those incidents. So whoever is responsible for that, they should hang their head in shame, quite frankly. Uh, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. This from Steve. Uh, who do the panel think might go out on loan? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, I'm sure they'll be looking to make space. Mitchell, any thoughts on that? I would imagine the younger players were looking yeah, at Yeah, oh, exactly that. It'd be some of the, the, the younger ones we, we signed when everyone was expecting like a big name and we went, ooh. Um, and then I think it'd be those guys who suddenly not making the bench. Um, I think you hope that they potentially... It was, what's the cut-off? Can, if we put send them out on loan, can we send them out on loan? If we send them to the like, conference, it doesn't have to be in the window, does it? Uh, no, I don't right. think it does. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah right. so I think some of them will play in the potentially the Arsenal game Tuesday, and then I think he'll look to move on. Some of these guys, kind kind of after that, it's yeah, you know, it's the oh, what's the gentleman who came in from oh, May Dabra. Yeah, Ricky. yeah, yeah. And then oh, come on, Ricky Aguilar. Yeah, Aguilar. Yeah, yeah, the one yeah. from Woking. Woking. Yeah. So it, it'll be though. It, it's not going to be. I'll be very upset and disappointed if I see Harry Parton disappear. I'll be very upset and annoyed. Um, it'll be the, the young guys that, yeah, we all kind of went who when when they signed. And it's, you know, we had it a few years ago when, when Richie was here. I think he brought in um, McGilp. McGilp. Oh, uh, yes. Cameron McGilp. Does that yeah. Make sense? So that's yeah. the vibe I get from these guys is a similar feel. It's, you know, bring them in now. See if there's much about them because we don't really have like an under 21s. Um, send them out alone and see see where they go from there. Yeah. Um, any of the other guys. Just before we get to you, Dan, uh, from James Spencer. Hello, James. Whether we are in a position to challenge will be based on whether we get a points deduction. I don't expect the EFL FA to do us any favours. I'll ask you that, Johnny, towards the end about when that might be decided. So out on loan then, Dan. Uh, I guess you've got similar thoughts to what Mitchell said. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, given that we are running quite a lean squad, um, there's probably only three candidates, Mohamed Dabre, uh, Ricky Aguilar, and then possibly Harry Parsons. Um, I've got a slightly contrary view to Mitch in the sense that I think you only need to look at last season and the seasons before that, actually. Scott Twine... Twine, I was going to say, Scott Twine, yeah, yeah. ...gained an awful lot out of uh, loan spells at Chippenham where he was the main man uh, scoring goals. And then to Newport, where he was the main man scoring goals. So I, I personally would keep Parsons, but if we sent him out on loan tomorrow and brought you know two attacking players in, um, you know you could tolerate that in the squad. Uh, on Dabre and Agia, I think where we are looking to develop those players, you probably actually want them training and being coached by Swindon's now excellent uh, coaching staff. So. Perhaps a low move for those two might come after Christmas. Um, but in the meantime, what I would like to see, uh, obviously, I think they're going to use the, the Papa John's Trophy Pizza Cup Shield um, <laughs> games to blood some of these guys. Um, I would also like to see the odd development friendly or under 23s fixture, whatever, organised so some of our fringe players can get some more regular football but yeah I mean it's actually a very lean squad um, there's not a lot of fat and and the ones who are in that you know sort of spare column are ones we're looking to develop anyway so it's a yeah, good position I, to be in the tickets aren't yet available for the Arsenal game I don't think uh, hopefully they will be this week um, just before I get to you on this subject Johnny uh, from Rob has anyone figured out where the seven additional minutes come from no uh, from Anthony, <laughs> I think it's fair to say, <laughs> who cares? Remember Andy Williams' offside goal for Northampton? Yes, we do. Good point. Uh, right then. Um, Peter, is Ben Garner doing post-match interviews? Can't seem to find anything. As far as I know, he is Johnny, isn't he? He definitely is, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Loan signings then, or loan outer outages, as it were. What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I think it's, well, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I think Harry Parsons' future will depend on what happens tomorrow. Uh, if we don't sign anyone, obviously he stays. If we sign one person, you can make a case for him potentially going somewhere like Chippenham. Um, and then if we, you know, were lucky enough to maybe sign a forward and a winger, I think yeah, you just you kind of got to get him out, like you said, because it helped. It really helps Scott Twine, and um, I don't think Twine would have been the player he is now if he hadn't have enjoyed that spell at, at Newport because it was just something fresh. Like he he's kind of done chipping him a couple of times. Um, you know, he got a little bit of a crack, but not really at Swindon, and then he was given his chance to go out and you know, just somewhere free. No one in the greatest of respects, no one knew him. But it was, you know, it was just a case of let's see what he can do. And he took that chance. So, uh, yeah, I think Harry Parsons, his future will be kind of dictated by what goes on tomorrow or overnight right now. Uh, and then the other two, potentially, yeah, it makes sense for them to stay around and go and play games for a, a National League or a National South North side where you're playing decent standard um i would say but I, I don't think we've seen mo dabra yet but ricky agra played a couple of times i think or he had yeah. he definitely played at cambridge yeah. i think the best thing i'd say about him is he sort of remind me of um johnny goddard in that when you we sign someone from an absolute like you know no just again no disrespect really to worthing but they're like they're not a great standard so no one really expected him to come in and kind of be able to play if you you know kind of just but i would say the best thing about him is he, he didn't look out of place he came on against cambridge and actually fitted in he looked like you no, know he just did it right. yeah so that was really encouraging i thought um so i'd quite like to see him yeah stay with the stay with the squad um keep learning from this very highly skilled coaching team and then just go and keep playing football because that will help him if we need him next year or in january uh, this from Alan, Arsenal tickets are on sale online. I've just bought two. Right, thank you for that, Alan. I'll do the very same after this is finished. Uh, Samantha, I love McCurdy. He's a complete pest to defenders. It'd be horrible to play against him in the last 20 minutes, wouldn't it? I mean, just just imagine that coming at you all the time. And gosh, it'd be a nightmare. Uh, from Rob, McCurdy is defenders' nightmare all over the place and unpredictable. Just perfect to free up Williams. There you go. Same point. Uh, right, a couple of other ones coming in uh, from James. Gladwin's not fit. He overdoes it in dangerous positions, doing pirouettes and losing it. Uh, from Gordon, Ben Gladwin is not, uh, well, loses the ball too often and passes are often under hit. I think we kind of slightly discussed this before we started this panel. Um, is that a fitness thing, do you think, Mitchell? No, no. I think that's Gladwin. Um I I don't want to be negative, but he's probably the one that I'm, I'm I'm probably the most negative about at the moment. He's the one that I find myself screaming out of anger with. I, I think he, and I said it to you guys briefly, I said it to a few people, I think we're carrying him. I think he's he's a luxury in the team um, that, because we know he has that moment of quality. He did it with the goal. He did it with the forward pads, the you know, Jack, Jack Payne goal. But he loses the ball, in my opinion, more than he does anything else. And, that everyone keeps saying that the fitness of Johnny Williams, I'm not seeing anything that makes me think that Gladwin could, is any fitter than, than Johnny Williams would, would be. I understand the super sub element of, of Johnny Williams, but Gladwin for me is the, the, the same Gladwin we had the last two times on loan. Um, he, he, he wasn't great. He has the first game back, looks you know, a bit of quality, and then he kind of dies out of what we see. I'm, I don't want to be negative, but I'm not the biggest fan of, of Gladwin. And, and I think we everyone's their hearts are in love with Gladwin and blinded by Gladwin because of this, the Sheffield United goal, you know, how he was then. Probably the same way I've got tinted glasses with Anthony Grant. I don't ever think he has a bad game. I think he's sensational. I think we've got a lot of Swindon fans who have that feeling towards Gladwin because they are blinded by the love and they don't see how how many times he gets caught in the ball and really puts people under pressure by giving them hospital passes and then suddenly... You know, they had to make a, a, a dangerous tackle, a last-ditch tackle, or foul to recover the fact that Gladwin got caught on the ball and and, and lost the ball and kind of in, in dangerous places as well. And sorry to be so negative, I, I don't know what everyone else's exact thoughts are, but that that's just how I feel about him. I'd, I'd rather see Johnny Williams, Harry pass. I'd rather throw another 
midfielder in there. Give East, a, yeah, I haven't seen much of East yet. Give him a game and see if we can compact the midfield or throw McCurdy and go four four two and put McCurdy running around Simpson. I, I just think we're carrying him. If I'm being honest. Okay, I was having this conversation at, at Taunton today, watching Somerset with Andrew Cousins, who's a swing of fan. Hello, Andrew. And uh, we were kind of saying he's got the perfect build for a football. I can't. You know, you look at that, he ought to dominate that central midfield area. Um, right, we've only got a minute or so left, Dan, so I wanted to put this to you. Uh, this is from Robert. Hello to you, Robert. Um, has the club got a rough idea or date when the Stratton Bank will start to be refurbished? Will it be named after an ex Swindon player or the Clem Morfuni Stratton Bank? Um, I don't know. Is it, <laughs> what do you think about that? Have you hear anything on that? Um, well, first things first, uh, you'd need to own the ground, I'd suggest. Um, that's yeah. the biggest piece of the jigsaw to come. Um, my own view, my personal view, is you are slightly polishing a turd with the uh, Stratton Bank. Um, and for the money you'd spend putting a roof on a dilapidated, you know, old school, shallow stand, why, why not just tear it down and build a new stand? Um, but yeah, I, I think... In terms of some of the supporters' trust aims around getting school children in, local clubs in, and actually starting to use that end a little bit more, once a few improvements are made to some basic things like toilets, catering, um, you know, general safety points, which you know you don't want to stick a thousand kids on the bank and then it's snow in December and you you've got ten kids with hyperthermia in hospital. Um, Stephen, so, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I'm sure all of that lovely stuff is to come. But I think key piece of the jigsaw is to to purchase the uh, the county ground in in unison with the club. That will unlock a lot of opportunity. Would you call it the Clenmore Fooney Stratton Bank? I wouldn't. No. no. Okay. <laughs> Just finally and briefly, then Johnny and Mitchell. What Dan asked you earlier on: What type of striker would you like to come in? Johnny Leefield, what sort of striker would you like to see come in? Um, I would like to see an experienced goal scorer. Uh, it's as simple as that. I think no one, not Brett Pittman-esque, obviously, but someone a bit that knows the game. I spoke to Tyrese on Saturday and he said he wants someone similar to him from to learn from. So someone, um, yeah, I, I think Tam will go after someone similar because of the style of play. So I think they both, Tyree Simpson and Swindon, want the same thing. And obviously you hope that they get an experienced goal scorer who's kind of done done what Tyree Simpson wants to do, really. Ben Tech, um, <laughs> um, I, I would go with um, Kieran Agard. He is available. He's a goal scorer. He knows the leagues. He, he was, I think, NK Don's last. He, he's free. That's the name that I think he could play with him. He can learn from him. He's not necessarily the exact same player. Um, but, I'll, yeah, don't know if we could afford him. But I didn't think we could afford Johnny Williams. Um, so, Kieran Agard, that's that's my person. Like, while we were talking, when you asked me, I did a little bit of Googling the people. And, and yeah, Kieran Agard, that's, go get him. Multitasking. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, just to remind you that the um, SAS Travel Office is now open in the town inn on a Tuesday night, uh, 7 until 8. Uh, so if you are uh, not on a match day, though, if it's Tuesday night match, then it's not open there. Uh, seven to eight on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, but you can email them at sastravel at sky.com or Twitter at sas underscore travel. And uh, as I understand it, there are one or two vacancies for Stevenage on Saturday. So if you'd like to get in touch with them, I'm sure they'd be happy to book you in. Uh, Chris, are you with us? I am certainly with you. Thank you very much for that. That's uh, lots of discussion and uh, differences of opinion, which is always good. So that's great. So thank you very much, guys. Um, so we will be back after the Port Vale game, so two weeks today. Um, we may have something in between if we can get it sorted, but uh, uh, we will see what we can do with that. If um, we do, we'll all be on social media. So um, thank you again, and we will see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.